everyone, it's Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is Bandai's 1 6 scale Stormtrooper. Um, as you can see, the box is absolutely massive, I'm struggling to get it in frame here. But um, it's about twice the size of a normal Bandai figure kit, uh, which is appropriate since it's twice, uh, the scale, uh, twice the size and scale. And yeah, the box got a bit bashed up on its way from Japan, but the kit itself was fine. And I've actually gone and taken or removed all the pieces for assembly. And if you're familiar with the Bandai kits, then it's pretty much exactly the same construction as the 1 12th scale Stormtrooper. Just uh, twice as big. There are a few slight differences, uh, especially in the construction of the helmet, which is a slightly different shape than the uh, 1 12th scale version. And also included is a nice big clear stand to help him stand up and so what I'm going to do for this one is another custom paint job so I've decided I'm going to do the um, Stormtrooper Commander from Star Wars The Force Unleashed since I've already done a um, Shock Trooper and a Shadow Trooper and I don't want to do a completely red trooper so there aren't really that many canon or semi-canon versions of the Stormtrooper that I can find really, so this is one of the few ones. And I think this is a Hot Toys version, I'm not sure. But I'm going to try and replicate the, the paint job and all the weathering as seen there. And it's just a quick look at the instructions um, and a nice stapled booklet this time instead of a fold out. So there you can see some of the differences in the construction of the helmet. And what's quite nice about this kit is that every single piece is a separate uh, moulded piece. So, whereas before, all of, all of these grey parts, say in this back piece here, and all of the grey parts on the helmet needed to be painted or attach a decal to. In this kit, they're all completely separate parts that don't need painting. So that'll just make things uh, just a little bit easier. Alright, so the first step will be to start masking all of the pieces that need painting and then uh, we'll start spraying. Alright, so that's the uh, majority of pieces masked up and ready for paint and uh, I'm really glad that's over because that was a really long and tedious process uh, especially doing this really nice piece at the back where it just the paint just goes over all of these huge big shapes and bumps um, so that was fun and the padding is quite complex so there's another column that needs to go down the middle so I'm just going to do this in multi stages so I'm just going to mask off this bit first and then once that's painted I'll, I'll mask it up again and, and paint the bit down the middle kind of like kind of like what I've done with the chest piece but this is um back to front so I'm going to do the bit in the middle first and then later on I'll mask up the stripes that go up the side just because it's quite a complex pattern and instead of spending hours cutting out the right shapes and getting them all even I thought it would just be easier to just, just to do it in multiple stages. And for the masking tape I've just used a mix of Tamiya's uh, specialty masking tape which forms a nice seal against the uh, the paint. And I think this is 6mm thick. And the green stuff is just regular uh, painter's masking tape I just picked up from a hardware store which is just a nice cheap and easy to get tape to cover up these large areas because the Tamiya stuff can be a bit uh, expensive but it's worth it I think and then just for the thinner some of the thinner bits I just uh, sliced it up with a knife uh, strips of tape just to get some thinner pieces there and got the helmet there just with a nice wedge shape down the front and straight down the back and yeah, so masking can be quite tedious and boring and um, not really fun. But it's worth it in the end. And now that's pretty much the majority of the painting done. All I need to do now is just spray it with the um, airbrush and that's the painting pretty much done. And as I've done with previous Bandai figure kits, I'm painting straight onto the plastic. So there's no undercoat or gloss coat or anything under there. And the... Um, the specific type of Vallejo acrylics that I use comes off really easily uh, when you do it like that 
so with a toothpick or with a bit of scraping you can um, clean up paint if it's been over sprayed or you want to take some paint back a little bit but it's really easy to do when you just spray it straight onto the plastic especially if it's shiny I wouldn't do this on uh, sanded or matte plastic because it would just be too hard to scrape off and so that's the technique I use with pretty much all of these Stormtrooper kits just gives me a bit more flexibility and room to uh, adjust the paint after it's been sprayed and it also means I don't have to be super accurate with this masking so there's a few areas in here that are a bit rough but uh, I can just clean that up later on and yeah so that's that and now it's time to uh, set up the airbrush okay so the paint mix I'm using is um, Vallejo's blue uh, seven parts of that to one part Vallejo white just to lighten up, lighten it up a little bit. And the thing with airbrushes is that the paint will find its way through the smallest of gaps. So you can see there I've missed a few places where the paint's leaked through, but I can just clean that up, no problem. Right, so that's looking pretty good. Quite happy with that. And a uh, bit of clean up work to do, especially on the back of the chest there. And some more masking needed there. But yeah, overall the colour's looking good and yeah, it's pretty happy so far. So just a bit of clean up work to do now. Okay, so now it's time for the, uh, the fun part, which is applying all the chips and scratches. Uh, as I mentioned before, just using this toothpick. And so the paint is relatively easy to remove. I can just go along and do random scratches and marks and chips. And just go along all the painted pieces and make them look nice and bashed up. The trick is to make it look random, but uh, not too uniform. Okay, so that's all the uh, painted pieces sufficiently bashed up. And now the next step is to uh, seal all of this paint under a clear coat. And what I'm using for that is my go-to clear coat, which is Tamiya's TS13 Clear, just from the spray can. And that's a nice lacquer-based paint, so it won't be affected by water or paint thinner, acrylic-based paint thinner, uh, later on. And that will allow me to do more weathering and more paint work 
and keep the, uh, the blue paint underneath protected. And so I'll just put a couple of thin coats of that over the blue paint and then start work on some more weathering. Alright, so the gloss coat has gone down on the painted pieces. Now I'm just going to add a few scratch and scuff marks with a bit of black paint, uh, Vallejo's model colour black, just on the end of a thin brush. And I'm not going to worry about getting it perfect too much. Um, if I want to go back and change some of the lines, I can just scratch them back with the uh, toothpick again. Since they're on a, uh, a gloss layer, it should be relatively easy to clean up. And I'm actually going to match some of these white scratch marks. So something's brushed against the uh, armour, created a black line and scratched some of the paint as well. But of course I'm just going to put scuff marks on the white pieces as well. And of course this also applies to all of the uh, white pieces that I haven't painted. So all of these will need to be uh, scuffed up as well. And I'm just doing this straight on the plastic. These haven't had a gloss coat or anything. Now for the next layer of weathering, I'm just going to apply a wash using the Valley Hose model wash. Now this one is light grey. And just using a uh, bigger brush, just going to apply it into most areas and then I'll clean it up once it uh, starts to dry. So the wash has been left to dry overnight. Now it's uh, mostly dry, it's still a little bit sticky to touch. So now I'm just going to bring it back a little bit just with a, uh, a smooth cloth. I'm just going to wipe away some of the uh, larger flat areas. And just use a wet cotton bud to clean up some of the more stubborn areas. Just even with just a little bit of water, you can see it's wiping away quite easily. I've actually decided to use a little bit of um, just airbrush cleaner. <laughs> it just makes um, the wiping a bit easier, and I, I don't have to press down as hard. I still have to be careful because this will pretty much wipe the entire thing off if I go too far. Alright, so that's all the wash cleaned up, and I've also attached some of the decals from the kit. 
so the blue grilled bit there and some of the grey or the black ribbing on some of the grey pieces of the helmet and I've left the wash a bit patchy in some areas, uh, so some of the leg pieces and the belt. I've cleaned up the helmet quite a bit. I've just left the wash in some of the recessed areas there. Because there is another layer, another final layer of weathering to come, so I don't want it to get too busy. And I was just having a look at the decal sheet. Um, this is the sticker version, but it comes with these really big Imperial logos. And I thought about using some of these on the uh, armour. So I went and used the water slide version on the shoulder pad and I thought that looked really cool. And so I just went ahead and put it on both shoulder pads and so I thought this would actually um, make a nice sort of unique look for the Stormtrooper Commander. So I've decided to keep those there and I've just used a bit of Microsoft to help the decal sink into the um, raised edge there. But of course I'm going to need to um, scratch it up a bit to, just to match the weathering and also use a um, toothpick. I'll probably wait till this is dry a bit more so it's a bit more flaky but I'll need to start scratching some of this away just to match the uh, weathered look so it doesn't look too um, printed on and out of place. And then once I've finished scratching it up, I'll just give it another coat of Microsoft just to help the um, scratched edges sink in a bit more. And then it's uh, ready for the final coat of weathering. Alright, so here's how the shoulders are looking. And they're pretty happy with how they came out. This build is actually taking me uh, quite a bit longer than usual, just, to, just due to it being the middle of winter. I uh, tend to slow down a bit over winter kind of in hibernation mode and I've also had family over so that's um, drawn out the build a little longer but uh, the previous segment I did was actually the night before and this morning I went to go and have a look at um, a channel called Go Figure Toy Reviews he's just put up a latest video on his Bandai Stormtrooper and he's doing pretty much exactly the same thing that I'm doing which was a uh, quite a funny coincidence but then he, he went and put the exact same decal on his um, shoulder as well so I just thought that was really funny that we're pretty much doing exactly the same thing even though we've not really been talking to each other so although his Stormtrooper is half the scale so uh, this one's a bit bigger but yeah I'd quite like to um, have a go at the smaller scale of uh, this version as well and yeah so all these pieces are ready for the next layer of weathering so I'm just going to uh, bust out my handy Tamiya Weathering Master I'm going to use a bit of oil stain and I'm also going to try a bit of the snow. Um, focus, please. Uh, just for white, just to um, fade up some of this blue paint a little bit, just to see how it looks. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll just rub it off. But um, I'm just going to be fairly light with the oil stain. Just going to do it on some of the um, raised areas, some of the edges. much just like that. It's kind of hard to uh, restrain yourself when you're doing this weathering. Just before you know it, it can um, run away from you a bit. So hopefully it's not getting too much. Because the thing is, before, it all, before I put it all together, I'm going to have to give it a uh, final semi-gloss coat to seal everything in before um, all the black pieces are attached. And so there's no turning back from that. Once that coat's down, then I can't modify any of this. So um, I have to make sure it's all exactly what I want. Um, while it's all in separate pieces, so I can't really see how it's going to look uh, when it's all put together. So there's a bit of blind faith going on. But uh, I mostly trust myself to uh, <laughs> get, this, get this pretty much how I want it. And there's another thing here with a sleeve. It's not really picking it up in camera as well as in real life, but there's a kind of a blue stain going on here where the paint has just settled into some of the cracks in the, well, some of the microscopic 
um, pores of the plastic and there's a slight blue stain there that I haven't been able to remove. So um, I was just hoping to cover the cover a bit of that up with the, this weathering, just to hide the mistakes. But I don't want to go too far. I'm going to try some of this white. Hmm, don't think it's really adding anything. Doesn't go down quite as well as the black. Okay, I'll probably just uh, abandon that. But you've got to try these things. Okay, so I get to um, dry fit the helmet at least and just make sure it's all looking okay. And so now it's time to uh, coat everything with um, Tamiya's Semi Gloss Clear. So it just kind of um, tones down the shininess a little bit, but still staying a little bit shiny. And it'll make all the paint and the white all match up quite nicely. And now I'm just going to um, check and double check and triple check all the pieces just to make sure everything's how I want it and there's no rogue fingerprints and any other signs of brush marks or anything and then um, start spraying. Oh and also I um, just thought I'd mention the boots will be actually be painted in a flat clear because these are supposed to be more of a um, you know, flexible material than the shiny armour. And for the weapons, I'm just going to use Vallejo Model Air uh, Metallic Black, just straight onto the uh, black plastic. So there's the weapons all uh, painted up. Now I'm just going to do a bit of dry brushing using uh, Vallejo mm. Steel. Now I'm just going to apply a Vallejo black wash over the entire thing. Okay, and just to finish off the uh, blasters, I'm just going to apply just a tiny amount of Vallejo rust wash, just in certain areas, just to... Um, Give the weathering a little bit of colour, because otherwise it's just um, metallic black and silver at this point. So I'm just um, putting it in some of these screws and bolts and other areas that might accumulate a little bit of rust.
Okay, so first major issue so far is that um, these are ball sockets for the uh, arms that go into the chest. Whereas on the smaller stormtroopers, these were just one piece, but this is a uh, two-part construction. You've got to put this ball onto the end of that peg there. And one of them went in okay, but the other one was just extremely difficult. Um, it would go in so far, and then it wouldn't go all the way to the end. And um, no matter how much force I put on, these are rounded, smooth surfaces don't really help because your fingers are constantly slipping off them, so I couldn't really get much force to squeeze that together. Um, so in the end, what I did was just lined the inside of the socket with um, just some uh, modelling glue, which helps to start melt the plastic and just make it a bit more um, slippy. And then I just had to basically squeeze them together with pliers just to get that to uh, finally settle into the right position. Um, which is a bit unusual for these Bendai kits. They usually go together without much issues, but uh, that was a particularly hard one. So um, just a tip if you're uh, building one of these, just uh, watch for things like that. And parts that are quite tough to get together, a little bit of glue on it will um, help to lubricate things a little bit. But just make sure you don't um, glue pieces together that, you, you know, that you're not supposed to glue.
All right, so there he is all put together, and you can tell how big he is just because I'm struggling to get him in the frame. And so uh, this is my first actual uh, one-sixth scale figure. Um, I've not had any of the hot toys or anything, so the size of this is uh, fairly new to me. And even though it's only twice the scale of the normal figure kits, it just feels so much bigger in volume. So that's kind of a nice bonus uh, to see when it, now that, that it's all put together. But uh, you may have noticed that I didn't paint any of the um, black parts of the body glove. Mainly because these get a lot of action, so I don't want to risk any paint flaking off when it's being uh, moved around. And also because I thought they were kind of, they looked kind of flat enough and they sort of hidden behind to the armour, so I didn't really worry about it. Alright, and there he is, finally complete. And uh, I'm having to use this dramatic camera angle just to get a nice close-up shot using the uh, camera tripod. So um, I'll uh, get a bit more of the figure and frame in a minute. But uh, yeah, it's been another really enjoyable Bandai figure kit build. Um, I've said many times before that these kits are pretty much just flawless in their design and execution. And they just make the, um, the build process just a lot more enjoyable when you don't have to worry about ill-fitting parts or flash or warped pieces. So... Um, yeah, can't recommend these uh, Bandai kits enough. And uh, this particular Stormtrooper kit, he's um, been, yeah, been just continued the trend, really. I haven't really had any issues. There's just been a couple of minor problems that I've pointed out. But uh, overall, it's uh, it's been fine. And um, I think one minor complaint that I've seen about this kit online is just that the uh, helmet uh, appears just a little bit too big for the body. And I think that's just a... Um, a recreation of the actual suits used in A New Hope. If you look at some of those outfits, some of them are a bit um, a bit wonky, shall we say. Not really symmetrical, you know, sort of large parts, all fitting parts, and some of them looked really kind of ropey. So uh, I think what Bandai have tried to do is just recreate a particular outfit, because it did take me a while, but um, I have noticed that the actual helmet itself is not symmetrical. So these parts here in particular, a slightly different shape. Um, these grey bits on the cheeks, they're a slightly different shape, and there might be some other parts, but it's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, I mean, it's not a deformity of the kit or anything. That's an intentional uh, recreation of a particular helmet that was obviously made back in the 70s when things weren't so uh, precise, and they've actually recreated a, a slight asymmetry in the helmet there. So I thought that was quite interesting. And in fact, I have actually gone back and looked at some of the um, 1 12th scale figures just to see if that that's uh, carried across to the smaller figures, but I can't really notice. So um, I think this might be unique to this particular kit. And uh, I'll just uh, switch this on and have a turn around. But yeah, so I'm really happy with how it's come out. Uh, just using all the... Um, the skills and techniques that I've used on all the previous Bandai kits with the wash and the weathering and the chipping. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how these kits are coming out. But um, as always, I'm keen to know what you guys think of this uh, Stormtrooper Commander theme in particular. I have noticed um, it uh, cropping up lately on uh, especially the Google Plus community page that we're um, involved with and seeing some photos and videos of uh, other YouTube members making this particular Stormtrooper, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, I think <laughs> Easy Company Gaming, he's not quite a fan of this um, particular scheme, but uh, I think we'll let that slide. Okay, so just panning up the model here, just to have a look at some of this detail a bit closer. The legs are there, and the weapon holster. That was just sprayed black and then um, given a semi-gloss coat and then Painted the buttons silver and gave them a bit of a rust wash, just like the weapons. So quite happy with how that came out. And he's uh, cradled against the stand that comes with the kit. I mean, it's not um, it's not going to stop him from falling over, but uh, it does a bit of a job of stabilising him, especially if you wanted to uh, pose these legs in a bit more of, a, of an action pose. There is a another clear piece that sort of plugs up underneath his crotch there, but I just thought that looked a bit too weird, so I've left that off. Yeah, going up to the belt. 
Now, if there is one criticism I have of my work, it's just that some of these um, strips of colour have come out a bit faded, a bit more than, than intended, so I could, they could have used a, probably another coat or two, just to get them in, get them in line with the rest of the colour. But it's, uh, it's not too bad, I suppose. And then we are ending up back at the top. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching that build. And as always, if you've got any feedback or questions, um, feel free to leave a comment in the field below. And also don't forget to check out our Google Plus community page, which I'll put a link to in the description. But I'll be putting up photos of this guy and different poses and uh, lots of nice close-up shots. So be sure to check that out. And uh, it's becoming a really active community. I think we're up to about 100 members now. And we're seeing pretty much daily posts of some really awesome builds. Uh, customised action figures, nice paint jobs, uh, news and information about up upcoming kits. Uh, we've got other YouTubers there, we've got other people just f posting photos. And uh, there's even been some non-Star Wars related stuff, which is always welcome. So it's becoming a really awesome community and I'm really happy to be part of it. So um, hopefully you go check that out and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. So um, thanks for watching and uh, until next time, take care.